everybody, it's Ludo. I'm back with what might end up being a rather long video, but I wanted to go super in depth on a trend that I've really, really been a fan of lately, and that is really dewy, juicy skin that involves a lot of cream products. However, I have oily skin. I live in a place where it gets pretty hot and humid in the summer, and since I pretty much commute everywhere, it's not always realistic to have this really juicy face full of dewy products. So I've been kind of working on a routine to help a dewy face of makeup last a really long time and through oil, through sweat, through rain, through humidity. And I figured I would share my tips with you. I'm also going to be trying out some of the new Fenty cream products and showcasing the Rowan eyeshadows. A couple of the newer, hotter cream products on the market. So if you want to see how I did that, just keep watching. So the first couple of tips I have are actually skincare related. And the first one is that you want to have your skin freshly cleansed before doing your makeup. Kind of seems like a no-brainer, but it especially applies to like those days in the summer where you're not doing your makeup until halfway through the day when you're going out with your friends. And even though you haven't really done anything, you haven't put any makeup on your face yet, your face is still dirty. There's sweat, there's oils, and you just don't want to set yourself up for failure by applying makeup to a face that is anything but clean. You don't want your makeup to have to sit on top of anything, you want it to melt right into the skin. However, and this is a big however, you're going to want to use a very mild cleanser. Don't use like a scrub or something with a lot of salicylic acid in it, uh, something that would be more drying or for treating acne. Because if you strip every single bit of oil off of your skin and then try to apply makeup right on top of that, it's basically going to make your skin freak out and start overproducing the oil in order to replenish what you've just stripped away. And that oil is going to seep right into your makeup and make it break apart like the continents. I definitely have a couple of different cleansers that I like to use for this purpose. If you wanted to go with a traditional cleanser, I would go with something either soap free or something like the Sephora Collection Amino Acid Clean Skin Gel. This is an oil free cleanser, so it is actually safe for lash extensions too, which is really nice. There's minimal amounts of fragrance in here. It's alcohol free, so it's not going to strip the skin. And the Amino Acid Blend is actually going to help to balance out oily and combination skin types. If you're lazy like me, you could always go in with something like a Missler water. This is actually the Sephora Collection uh, Zinc Missler Triple Action Cleansing Water. This one actually has a little bit of zinc in it for purifying the skin. And it's, again, just going to help to balance your skin throughout the day while also cleaning any uh, dirt or sweat or oil off of the top layer of your skin before you put on your makeup. If you do feel like you need to exfoliate a little bit before your makeup application because you have a couple flakes or some congestion, instead of using a scrub, I would highly recommend using something like an AHA pad. The Glow Peel Pads from Sephora Collection here have a very gentle glycolic acid that's actually sandwiched with an aloe. So what that glycolic acid is going to do is unglue the dead skin cells from your healthy living skin cells while also nourishing the skin. And it's going to do all that without irritating or dehydrating it. The second tip I have is to find an SPF that really works for you. It's worth it to go into Sephora after the lockdown's over and try out a couple of different samples of different SPFs or even just go to the drugstore and pick a couple up because SPF is something that is highly, highly personal and highly crucial. And I find a lot of my oilier skinned clients tend not to be wearing enough SPF or wearing it often enough because they find that traditional sunscreens feel too greasy and make their makeup slide off. So especially under makeup, they're not wearing SPF or they're just wearing a tinted moisturizer that maybe has a little bit of SPF in it, which just isn't enough and can lead to skin damage. But, but there is good news. A lot of companies such as uh, Supergoop, which has now entered Canada as of May 5th through Sephora, have been targeting that market with a line of like matte sunscreens and zinc sunscreens that are really going to help protect oily skin without making it feel greasy. So there's really no excuse not to be wearing an SPF, especially under your makeup. Remember how I said that if you strip your skin and deplete it of oil, it's going to just start overproducing that oil and basically screw with everything that you're trying to do. That means even if you have oily skin, you still wanna moisturize underneath your makeup. And you really wanna use something that's going to be packing the biggest amount of hydration with the lowest amount of slip. To it. You're not going to want to use something that's super juicy or dewy on its own because that's what we're going to be doing with the makeup afterwards. 
However, I find a lot of gel type moisturizers that are meant for oily skin tend to actually make makeup drag on top of it. So you want to try and balance the two. I have one more Sephora Collection skincare product to recommend. That is the Super Matte Moisturizer. Now this one is a thin gel cream formula that sinks in really, really easily. It packs a big punch of hyaluronic acid as well as squalane to help balance out the skin give it that nourishment and hydration, but it also has naturally derived silica in it. And silica is an ingredient that is found in a lot of those HD finishing powders because it really helps to blur the pores without clogging them. So I find that this moisturizer actually really works well as a primer underneath my makeup, as well as just giving me a good amount of moisture and keeping my skin feeling comfortable throughout the day. Okay, so now that our skincare is done, we are cleansed, we are moisturized, potentially exfoliated a little bit, we can actually start doing our makeup. So I like to start with a spray primer and I like to do this for dry skin in the summer as well as oily skin all year round. I like using the Smashbox primer water for really hot days. This one is just a limited edition bottle but it normally comes in a clear one. And by using a spray primer you're basically just giving your base one less layer to try and gum up or fight against. I find if I use a really like lotion-y primer, something with a little too much silicone or glycerin, it actually starts to melt all of my products together by the end of the day, like some sort of grotesque oil painting or like one of those multi-layer candles. But I find that spray primers are actually just super effective at locking in your base for the day and keeping your skin super even without being too obtrusive to the rest of your makeup. And we'll let that dry. I like to let it dry down completely before I go in with anything else. So you've probably noticed by now that I do not have my eyebrows on, and that is because I want to show you guys how to get the most sweat-proof eyebrows. <laughs> I find my eyebrow makeup is something that tends to liquefy on me rather quickly, especially where I don't have a lot of hair to grab onto it. So a trick I like to do is actually to apply a waterproof eyeshadow primer underneath my brow products. So I do my brows before the rest of my face. So I'll use either my Smashbox 24 hour eyeshadow primer or this new Catrice eye foundation, which I tried out in my last video and I actually really like. So this is just gonna give the brow product something to hold on to. And at that point, you can either use something like a brow pomade. I have the Anastasia Dip Brow right here. I'm gonna skip on this today because we are going for more of that natural, no makeup makeup, dewy kind of look. And then there's also brow markers. So this one is from Sephora Collection. I find brow markers, once you get the hang of them, can give you a really nice natural effect. And then they almost act like a stain on the skin. So they're not going to melt off or go anywhere. However, since I'm lacking a bit of that structure on my brow right now, I am going to use a pencil. And this is just the benefit precisely my brow. So there's my brows penciled in. I did make them a little large and in charge because we're going to be going a bit more intense on the cheeks. So then I used just a tinted brow gel. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel. And it just tints the brows a little bit. It doesn't do a lot of holding. So then for the last step, what I'm actually gonna do is take a spoolie and a setting spray and work that through my brows to keep them in place. And that's actually going to help the color last without melting as well. You can also use a hairspray for that step. I just don't have any right now. So I'm just going to throw a bit of my eye primer onto my eyelids. I'm actually going to be doing my base before my eyes today, which is a little unusual for me. But I want to see what we're working with on the cheeks before I go in and do the eyes. I want to be able to match the two. So we're already primed, which means it's time to add a bit of coverage around the face, even out some redness. If you're somebody who prefers fuller coverage, I would recommend going in with a solid cream foundation, either in a compact or something like a stick foundation. Since they are solid at room temperature, I find they don't melt throughout the day as much as a lot of liquid options. And they can still give you that dewy appearance, especially as you live them in throughout the day. However, I'm just kind of doing my makeup at home. I'm going to be going for a little less coverage. And what I'm going to use for that is the Nude Sticks Tinted Cover. You can see I'm just about done with mine. I love this stuff. It is basically the only tinted moisturizer that I've tried that actually lasts on my skin throughout the day. I really, really highly recommend this stuff. Evens out redness really nicely. Looks super even on the skin. 
and it just it's pretty undetectable it just looks like skin and I'm just applying that with the nude sticks buff and blur brush so I don't have to be super careful with this I can basically just smush it around everywhere and this formula contains green tea to help balance out as well which might be part of the reason that it lasts so well on oily skin but it still just looks like super dewy hydrated skin without giving you that kind of sheen of oil and then I'm going to be taking a little bit of concealer. I like to pair this guy with the Catrice High Coverage Liquid Camouflage Concealer. I actually really don't like this concealer when it's applied with a sponge, but with a brush it is perfect. And it's waterproof, which really aligns with our goal of the day. I'll just go over my cheek a little bit because since we're going to be going over there with bronzer, I don't want it to get muddy looking because I have pigmentation under there and whenever I want to keep coverage there with concealer instead of rubbing back and forth I just spin that around barely touching my brush to the skin okay so now that we've got our base down we can start playing with the Fenty creams I'm actually going to start with the contour in the shade amber and I'm going to take that on a little fluffy brush and draw almost where my cheekbone is just right under my cheekbone and then I just kind of feather that upwards and so far the formula of this guy is not coming off too different from the matchsticks that Fenty has in the same shade maybe a bit more sheer which actually makes it a little easier to work with I'll just have to see how it wears throughout the day and then I'm going to take the brush that we used for concealer and I'm actually going to do a bit of like an eye lift trick so I take the bronzer and I dab a little bit off on the back of my hand I place it right here in the corner of my eye and just pull it up and out and you just bring that up to the temple and then almost feather it right into the hairline and then I take a little bit not quite a full nose contour but just right at the top of the bridge and feather that down. This is making that a little easier to do than the stick bronzer because it's not as pigmented so you're not going to have to spend as much time blending it out. So that's a bit of contour done. Now we can move on to the actual bronzing shade. I picked up the shade Butter Biscuit which is the lightest bronzer shade. It's technically the shade 2 because amber is shade number 1. And then again I'm going to actually wipe that off on the back of my hand a little bit and start to bronze in a larger area than we did the contour. I'm just using this on this bigger type of fan sculpting brush. Okay, now the fun part. I have four of the cream blushes here. So I have Strawberry Drip and then Daiquiri Dip, just that red and then Strawberry Drip is more of a corally pink. And then I went for the two more out there shades. I got Fuego Flush, which is that bright yellowy orange and Drama Class, which is purple. Now I kind of want to go with the purple just because of the hair and the shirt but I think I am going to stick with the warmer two shades. And my favorite brush for applying any sort of cream blush is the 99 from Sephora collection that is the sculpting blush brush. So I'm going to start by going into that lighter shade and I'm just going to dab it onto the cheeks. Okay, so these are pretty sheer too, which is nice because that means they're going to be buildable. Oh, it's so pretty! And you'll notice that I'm using brushes to apply everything as opposed to a beauty blender. I stay away from the beauty blender because the beauty blender is just going to introduce extra moisture to your products that could make them break down throughout the day. So then I'm going to take a bit of that red shade and almost not quite drape with it, but I will take it higher up on the cheekbone. Okay, yes, that looks really, really pretty. That's that kind of flush I was expecting when I picked out those brighter shades. So then I'll apply a little bit of cream highlight as well. And for this look, I think I'm going to go for Champagne Flash uh, Vanish Highlighting Stick from Hourglass. And I just draw that onto the back of my hand and pick it up with a brush. This is just a random one from Cover Effects that I found in my brush cup. <laughs> a lot of my other cream highlighters are very pinky toned and I didn't want to go like too pinky silvery 
with the more red coral blush. And this one almost has a cream to powder kind of finish. It's not like one of those sticky lip gloss type of stick highlighters. So that is our base. It is not completely perfected or overly refined. You can still see some of my blemishes through, but it just looks really nice and juicy and glowy. And then you've got that nice flush on the cheek. And this is gonna wear in really well throughout the day and look even more healthy as opposed to dipping into deep fryer territory, if you know what I mean. So now we can quickly use some creams on the eyes. Uh, since I've already primed my eyes, I'm just gonna jump right in. And some of the most long lasting cream sticks I have are from Laura Mercier. These are the caviar sticks. These are a pretty penny, so I usually pick them up around Christmas when they're in a set. And this is the shade Rush. This gorgeous color, it's really hard to describe. I just like to blend that out gently with a dense fluffy brush. But this almost has like a garnet plum undertone with a ton of blue duochrome opalescent micro glitter in it. It's hard to catch on camera, but we're mostly using it as a base that's going to catch the light for some other shadows that we're going to put on top. Just gives your lids that really healthy shine, as you can see when I move my head back and forth. So then I'm gonna be taking a product that has been receiving a lot of buzz lately. And these are the Rowan Beauty Cream Eyeshadows. I have here the 75 Degrees Warm Palette. I really like the one they just came out with, the 1111 palette. It's got more of those like rosy, silvery tones, which I'm super into right now. And I think with this eye look, I'm actually gonna dip into this shade because it's got a nice mix of warm and cool tones. And I just take that on my finger and I'm gonna dab that on the outer half of my lid. And I was skeptical about these two, but they just have this other worldly quality on the lids. I'm not saying you can't get it with any other product, but you can't get it with any other product this quickly and effortlessly. And they just look really sophisticated, but still youthful and trendy. I don't know if I'm even gonna add anything else to that upper lid in terms of shimmer, but I will take a bit of this Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Eye Color in the shade Coco on a teeny tiny eyeliner brush. And just gently press that into my lash line to add a little bit of grounding there so that the dimension on the lid really stands out. And then for the lower lash line, pretty simple. Just gonna take that same shadow we used from the Rowan Quad on my pinky and smudge it along the lower lash line. And for the brow bone and inner corner highlight, I'm just gonna take the face highlight that we use on my pinky and use that. So another tip that I have is that if you are using a setting spray to apply it before you apply your mascara to stop your mascara from melting. And I try not to overload on the setting spray, I just do two or three spritzes because you wanna lock in your base without weighing it down. So now that that is dried down, I can apply my mascara and you want to find a mascara that's going to end up being really smudge proof on you, whether that ends up being a waterproof option or just something that you find lasts a long time. I'm going to use the Hourglass Caution Mascara. I find that this one lasts the longest without smudging on me. It's more lengthening than it is volumizing. And it separates really nicely while still making your lashes look pretty fluttery and long. And I apply minimal amounts to the bottom lashes because I find that is always the tell for when my makeup starts to wear off is that I've got those rings of mascara underneath my eyes. There's the mascara applied. And then for the lip, you're going to want to use a wooden lip liner if you can, as opposed to a gel formula. Unless it's a waterproof gel formula that really sets down, I like the wooden lip pencils for the barrier they provide. And I'm using the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Wherever Walnut just because it matches my natural lip tone pretty closely. And from there, I kind of wanted to match the lip to the cheek. So I'm taking the Dior Addict Stellar Shine in the shade 673, which is kind of like a corally sheer lip color that matches Strawberry Drip really nicely. It's got this nice lip balm consistency to it. And from there, I'm going to take my Koza Wet Lip Oil in the shade Jellyfish, just to give it that really lacquer-like shine. So this is the finished look in natural light.
All right, guys, I just want to thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope these tips helped, whether you have oily skin or not, to make your makeup last through those long summer days. Hopefully we'll be able to leave our houses, and hopefully the snow outside my window will melt very soon. <laughs> Bye!